This is Laborts, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. Alright guys, the mini was primed with Vallejo's black mecha primer, but any black primer would do. I use a mix of grey brown and rhinoxide for the first base coat. Like with the Crusader, I'm inspired by the work of Sebastian Lavigne, who did the box art for the Kickstarter campaign, but uh, my version going to look a little bit different. I put his Instagram link in the video description, so make sure you check out his awesome work. So Papa Labort starts with the hood and the robes. Uh, to create a brownish black look, we cover 80% of the surface, but we need to have some pure black areas. I use Steep Link to apply the paint where I want to smooth out the transition between the layers. This will create texture and helps with blending. If you are not familiar with Steep Link, you just create small dots or lines, or basically any pattern you can come up with, to create texture. But dots are the easiest in my opinion. After that I glaze over a previous layer to make that gradient a bit smoother. So dilute your paint a bit more, upload your brush on a paper towel and move the paint from the black part to the brown part. Don't use too many layers because that way you'll lose the texture that we created previously and I will slap on your tidy hand. Let's add some Karak stone to our dark brown mixture and reduce the highlight areas while leaving some of the previous layer visible. Remember that we want our rope to read as dark color, so if your highlight areas become too big, the brighter color the mini would read as. We can create a bigger highlight on the hood to move the focal point towards the head, but I will do smaller areas on the rest of the ropes. This mini is Papa Laborts' favorite from the game. I was so excited to paint it, like when I received my first film in an album. As you see, I'm using stippling as my main blending technique. The brush uh, basically works like a tattoo machine while creating these tiny dots. Reminds me of Granny Laborts' uh, prison tattoos. Anyway, this dot doesn't need to be perfect. You can vary the size to make the leather robe look a bit more rough. I attach the highlight reference photos to the Patreon link, so use them to easily sketch out the highlights for the Plague Doctor. If you are not a Patreon of Papa Laborts, you can be one for only 2 euro a month and access to these tutorials a week early with some exclusive content. Add a bit more Karak stone to the mix and continue the process by gradually decreasing the highlight areas. Do some edge highlights as well on the hood to make it more defined. It's a bit more organic process between blending and creating highlights. I change the consistency of the paint I'm using back and forth. I also create some extra tiny lines on the hood to imitate that the surface is scratched. Painting rough and oil leather is always fun, so try to enjoy the process and not worry about if your lines are super thin or whatnot. The key to make the thin lines and small dots is to have a brush with a nice tip and offload the paint so you can shape the tip of the brush to be pointy like the hair on Granny's leg. Alright, let's work on the other leather parts. We will make them a warmer brown to have some variation in color. Cover 90% of the surface with the mix of flat brown and rhinoxide. Continue with the stippling motion to have the same rough texture like we did before. On the shoulder it's a bit tricky to paint around the spikes. You can cover the whole thing brown and paint the spikes uh, black later, but it's manageable to paint around the spikes. To blend in the colors, apply some glazes, but only one or two layers to increase the smoothness a tiny bit.
After that, add some Karakstone to the flat brown and sketch out the highlight areas uh, with the same process like we did before. Cover around 50% of the previous layer and try to create uh, some texture with stippling. I use Karakstone a lot recently, it's a nice option to have for some desaturated coed highlights. After that I glaze over the previous layer pulling the paint from the dark to the light areas. A your brush so your paint won't get too runny. One or two layers of glaze should be fine. This is two part paint, one part water so it's quite diluted. Add a bit more Karakstone to the mix and push the contrast more. I mainly use this color on the top parts of the surfaces uh, I like to highlight. Like on the fingers and knuckles or on the skirt. I create a little circle on the shoulder pads, but I watch out not to create too much contrast on the surface. These oil leathers shouldn't be very reflective, and if you push the contrast too much, it would mean that they were treated with some oil or uh, something to become shiny. Don't get me wrong, there are shiny leathers, even glossy finishes, if you think about boots or uh, latex parties that Granny Laborts always told me about a lot of times, but this Plague Doctor wore that outfit for a long time, so that's why we want to create these textures. At this step, Papa Laborts thought that maybe the highlights are a bit too high in contrast, so I muted it back with a very diluted glaze of flat brown. It's like three part water, one part paint, but you can use a glaze medium if you prefer that. Just don't use any matte medium because that will create a surface that is much harder to work with. If you prefer matte finishes, just use a matte varnish when the mini is done. Let's use the Rhinox Hide and Grey Brown mixture again and paint the mask, the wraps on the hand and those little laces on the collar. On the bottom side of the wraps, try to leave some black between the cloth so it will look more defined and crispy. After that cover 90% of the previous layer with the grey brown. I uh, leave a little bit of darker area along the lower part of the beak uh, but keep this section really small because this mask shouldn't be high in contrast, since it's another leather material painted with a brighter color. Make sure to paint the other half of the beak with a little bit smaller highlight areas, since light is coming from the left, the other side of the mini should be darker. I'm also blending at this stage using one or two coats of glaze. Now let's add some Karakstone to the mix and reduce the highlight areas more. I cover 80% of the previous layer and use a thin consistency, so it will help me with blending the new color. Paint all the little bumps on the mask around the mouth part and the top of the wrist straps. Then I go in with pure Karakstone and edge highlight all the wraps and push the contrast a bit more on the mask. Uh, where I felt like the paint ran into the crevices and lost some definition, I blacklined those parts with uh, Rhinox Hide, creating tiny lines in the crevices to increase the definition on the wraps. Lastly, I add some ice yellow to the Karakstone and painted the final highlights on the mask, really focusing on the top part and using stippling. The mask turned out pretty low contrast, but you can see the soft shadows on the wrinkles on the top part, and the wrist wraps are much higher in contrast, which I think uh, looks pretty nice. And if you like them too, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. For the bindings on the robes, I use Death World Forest mixed with Rhinoxide. It's a good foundation for a dirty green color. You can glaze this color over the folds on the chest that are facing down, so we won't leave them black and the shadows won't feel unnaturally dark.
Then I went back with Dartware Forest and covered 70% of the previous layer. Cover more of the surface towards the top part and less towards the bottom. If you use thin layers, then it will blend in pretty easily. On the folds of the chest, try to paint the rectangular highlight shape and paint the edges on the darker parts of these folds. Later, I glazed over the folds on the chest to smooth out the transition from black and reduce the contrast a bit, not leaving any weird shadows. After that, add some Ogrin Camo to the Deathworld Forest and reduce the highlight areas and edge highlight all the bindings on the robes. Use base layer consistency to do that and don't apply too much pressure on the brush. Just slide it on the edges with ease. Like when you take off the socks from Granny's feet. If you have to force it, it's uh, going to be bad. So this way, our edge highlights will be thin and crispy like the skin on Granny's feet. With pure Ogrin Camo, I went back on the edges and edge highlighted again so they pop out more and painted the edges on the chest as well. By the way guys, if you follow the tutorials of Papa Labords, please send me the results through Facebook or Instagram. I'd really like to see them. Now it's time for the googles. I glazed a little bit of Karak stone to the top half of the lens. Try to be careful around the lens and don't let the paint pool in the crevices. I can't really show the process on the left eye because the hood blocks my camera unfortunately, but it's the same process for the both eyes. Then I used ice yellow and created two small dots to imitate a glint effect for the lens. This made them look shiny like Granny's eye. After that I covered all the metal parts with a mix of black and neutral grey with a base layer consistency. Then I used light grey to highlight small objects. I usually try to make a small gradient, but this time uh, I don't have much surface to do that. So on the belt buckle I edge highlighted all the sides and uh, on the googles painted 50% of the googles frame leaving a dark area between the highlights. The spikes could read as metal if you highlight just one side of them and try to outline their base where they connect to the shoulder pad. To push the contrast a bit more, I add some ice yellow to the light grey and created smaller areas inside the previous layer. I edge highlighted the belt buckle again, but I highly recommend that you angle your mini in a way that is comfortable for you. I just painted this way because I'm painting for the camera, which is a bit challenging for me. Now all that is left are the fires. I'm going to paint them green. Painting see-through objects is a fun thing. I wanted to fill these fires with some glowy green liquid, so I started with the Death World Forest. On the bigger fire, I glazed over the black parts a little bit, but since our surrounding environment is dark, we don't have to paint the glass uh, with cold colors to set the effect that is uh, made of glass. I created bigger highlight on the one side, but I'm not using maximum opacity for that. Only a couple of thin layers. Then I added some phalanx yellow to the Death World Forest and highlighted the fire towards the bottom where the mixture would be more concentrated. On the smaller fire I painted thicker vertical lines that are parallel to the shape. To blend in the new layer I used some glazes. Add more phalanx yellow and continue the process reducing the highlight areas. The big highlight on the side of the fire may look a bit weird, but I want to make a harsh reflection there so it will look nice, don't worry. Just trust the process and most importantly trust Papa Labords or I will slap on your tiny hand. Continue the process with phalanx yellow. I only used it over the bottom of the fire. Since this part is the bottom of the fire, we can make it bigger since the mini always casts a shadow of itself. Mm -hmm. 
With a mix of ice yellow and phalanx yellow, I create a small glint over the area where we painted some dead world forest. Just a small vertical line that follows the shape of the file. Uh, add some small dots to the other side and uh, you are basically done. I painted an OSL effect for these uh, files. If you'd like to see how I did that, uh, you can check out it on my Patreon page. The link is in the video description. And there you go guys, the Plague Doctor is finished. If you want to paint the base the same way I did, just uh, check out my How to Paint Stone Tile Bases uh, tutorial on YouTube. I originally made it for Massive Darkness, but it fits any dungeon crawler game really. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support these kind of videos. With special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Cold Bloody Dom, Trying to Paint Mirrors, Jonathan Mosner, Rulezak, Vlad D, Earthapult21, Paints and Games, and One Sharp Joe Crafts. If you want to support Papa Laborts, you can do that on Patreon, where you will have early access to these videos, vote on the next minute, or if you need a little bit of extra help, online coaching is also available. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt cheek.